welcome to another session in Math Mike. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Today's video, we will be creating frequency distribution table given an ungrouped data. Now let's start. Below are the scores of 40 students in mathematics statistics test. If you observe, we have here a raw data, which is an ungrouped data. Our aim is to create this given ungrouped data to a group data using frequency distribution table. To start with, we will first identify what is the highest and what is the lowest value? Based on the observation, the highest is the 97 and the lowest is the 43. If you already identify the highest and lowest, so we can proceed to the next step, which is computing the range. How to compute the range? All you need to do is identify the highest and lowest and subtract them. Based on the given, and we, we do that one earlier, highest value there is the 97 and the lowest value is the 43. If you subtract directly, we have now the result of the range. So our range now, if we subtract 97 to 43, results to 54. Next step is to identify the class interval. How many columns will be creating in the frequency distribution table? To identify the class interval, all we need to do is use the formula 1 plus 3.322 log n, which this n stands for the total number of data. So all you need to do is count how many data do we have, and based on our example, we have 40. All you need to do is multiply and add directly to 1. So log 40 times 3 point plus 1 results to 6.32. you will be rounding up the value into a whole number and the result is seven. If the result is 6.1 still, we will be rounding up the item. Please take note on that one. Next, we will be computing the class size. How to compute the class size? All you need to do is identify the value of range and divide it to the class interval. So our range based on the computed value we have, so 54 all over 7. So divide 54 and 7 results to 7.72. Now take note, we will be rounding up the item now. So rounding up the item results to eight. Therefore, we have now the elements in frequency, in creating frequency distribution table. Again, we will first identify the lowest and highest, then directly get the range by subtracting the highest to lowest followed by identifying the class interval using the formula given. And lastly is to compute the class size. 
which is dividing the range all over the class interval. Now, we can directly or we can proceed directly to the table, which is the frequency distribution. First thing you will do in creating frequency distribution is a table form. Okay. Then create three columns. That's it. So if you create three columns, now you will first write on the first column a class interval followed by a tally and followed by the frequency. These are the basic elements of your table or the frequency distribution table. Now, let's proceed now in applying the class interval. How many? Based on the computed value earlier, we have eight. So therefore, we will be creating eight rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we already have the eight rows stands for its class interval. Now, we will proceed now in filling up the table. Always start below, which is the lowest okay, value of the data, which is the 43. If you already identify the lowest, so now start counting using the value we computed earlier, which is the interval, and that is 8. So include counting the 43 in your interval. So we have 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. So we have a class size of 8 units. Now we will be starting on the next row in 51. Still the same process. We'll be counting eight units, including 51. So 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. Followed by okay, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. Then we'll play 67, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74. Then 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82. Then we have 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. And last row would be 91, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98. Okay. Now please count. the class interval so we must have seven one two three four five six seven okay correction we have uh we exceed the number of rows okay so we must have only seven okay seven uh class in, in our table now next thing will be the tallying all we need to do is check the number and identify which of the following class interval belong this data is. So let's start with 80. 80 belongs to this group. So we will place one followed by 61. Okay. Then 65. Take note, it will, uh, the tallying consumes time. 
Okay, so it depends to you what strategy you'll be using to make it more simpler in tallying. 97, 62, 67. And if you observe, I uh, parse out the value that is already placed in order that uh, it is more uh, valid or more guided with the following numbers that was not uh, on the table yet. Okay, 64, 67. Okay, 43. And 76. 63. 72. Okay, 64. Then 87. Then 66. Then 50. 46. And 52. So we are done. Uh, tallying all the raw data so all we need to do is count the tally or the sticks in the tally and we will write the numerical value to the frequency so we we have three then followed by five then six then seven eleven three then five to check your frequency all you need to do is add all the frequency and it must be equivalent to the total number of data which is equivalent to 40 and that's it so we are done creating the frequency distribution table given ungrouped data